A castle is a type of fortified structure built in Europe and the Middle East during the Middle Ages by nobility. Scholars debate the scope of the word castle, but usually consider it to be the private fortified residence of a lord or noble. This is distinct from a palace, which is not fortified, from a fortress, which was not always a residence for nobility, and from a fortified settlement which was a public defense, though there are many similarities among these types of construction. Usage of the term has varied over time and has been applied to structures as diverse as hill forts and country houses. Over the approximately 900 years that castles were built, they took on a great many forms with many different features, although some, such as curtain walls and arrow slits, were commonplace. A European innovation, castles originated in the 9th and 10th centuries, after the fall of the Carolingian Empire resulted in its territory being divided among individual lords and princes. These nobles built castles to control the area immediately surrounding them, and were both offensive and defensive structures. They provided a base from which raids could be launched as well as protection from enemies. Urban castles were used to control the local populace and important travel routes, and rural castles were often situated near features that were integral to life in the community, such as mills and fertile land. Many castles were originally built from earth and timber, but had their defenses replaced later by stone. Early castles often exploited natural defenses, and lacked features such as towers and arrow slits and relied on a central keep. In the late 12th and early 13th centuries, a scientific approach to castle defense emerged. This led to the proliferation of towers, with an emphasis on flanking fire. Many new castles were polygonal or relied on concentric defense, several stages of defense within each other that could all function at the same time to maximize the castle's firepower. These changes in defense have been attributed to a mixture of castle technology from the Crusades, such as concentric fortification, and inspiration from earlier defenses such as Roman forts. Not all the elements of castle architecture were military in nature, and devices such as moats evolved from their original purpose of defense into symbols of power. Some grand castles had long winding approaches intended to impress and dominate their landscape. Although gunpowder was introduced to Europe in the 14th century, it did not significantly affect castle building until the 15th century when artillery became powerful enough to break through stone walls, while castles continued to be built well into the 16th century. New techniques to deal with improved cannon fire made them uncomfortable and undesirable places to live. As a result, true castles went into decline and were replaced by artillery forts with no role in civil administration, in country houses that were indefensible. From the 18th century onwards, there was a renewed interest in castles with the construction of mock castles, part of a romantic revival of Gothic architecture, but they had no military purpose. Definition Etymology The word castle is derived from the Latin word of castellum which is a diminutive of the word castrum, meaning fortified place. The Old English castel, Old French castel or chastel, French chateau, Spanish castillo, Italian castello, and a number of words in other languages also derive from castellum. The word castle was introduced into English shortly before the Norman conquest to denote this type of building, which was then new to England. Defining characteristics in its simplest terms, the definition of a castle accepted amongst academics is a private fortified residence. This contrasts with earlier fortifications, such as Anglo-Saxon burs and walled cities such as Constantinople and Antioch in the Middle East. Castles were not communal defenses but were built and owned by the local feudal lords, either for themselves or for their monarch. Feudalism was the link between a lord and his vassal where, in return for military service and the expectation of loyalty, the lord would grant the vassal land. In the late 20th century, there was a trend to refine the definition of a castle by including the criterion of feudal ownership.
thus tying castles to the medieval period. However, this does not necessarily reflect the terminology used in the medieval period. During the First Crusade, the Frankish armies encountered walled settlements and forts that they indiscriminately referred to as castles but which would not be considered as such under the modern definition. Castles served a range of purposes, the most important of which were military, administrative, and domestic, as well as defensive structures. Castles were also offensive tools which could be used as a base of operations in enemy territory. Castles were established by Norman invaders of England for both defensive purposes and to pacify the country's inhabitants. As William the Conqueror advanced through England, he fortified key positions to secure the land he had taken. Between 1066 and 1087, he established 36 castles such as Warwick Castle, which he used to guard against rebellion in the English Midlands. Towards the end of the Middle Ages, castles tended to lose their military significance due to the advent of powerful cannons and permanent artillery fortifications. As a result, castles became more important as residences and statements of power. A castle could act as a stronghold and prison but was also a place where a knight or lord could entertain his peers. Over time, the aesthetics of the design became more important. As the castle's appearance and size began to reflect the prestige and power of its occupant, comfortable homes were often fashioned within their fortified walls. Although castles still provided protection from low levels of violence in later periods, eventually they were succeeded by country houses as high-status residences. An example of this is made in Castle which, despite the name of, is an Iron Age hill fort, which had a very different origin and purpose. Although, Castle, has not become a generic term for a manor house many manor houses contain, Castle, in their name while having few if any of the, architectural characteristics. Usually as their owners like to maintain a link to the past and felt the term castle was a masculine expression of their power. In scholarship the castle, as defined above, is generally accepted as a coherent concept, originating in Europe and later spreading to parts of the Middle East, where they were introduced by European crusaders. This coherent group shared a common origin, dealt with a particular mode of warfare, and exchanged influences. In different areas of the world, analogous structures shared features of fortification and other defining characteristics associated with the concept of a castle. Though they originated in different periods and circumstances and experienced differing evolutions and influences, for example, Shiro in Japan, described as castles by historian Stephen Turnbull, underwent a completely different developmental history, were built in a completely different way and were designed to withstand attacks of a completely different nature, while European castles built from the late 12th and early 13th century onwards were generally stone. Shiro were predominantly timber buildings into the 16th century. By the time Japanese and European cultures met in the late 16th century, fortification in Europe had moved beyond castles and relied on innovations such as the Italian trace Italienne and star forts. Forts in India present a similar case when they were encountered by the British in the 17th century castles in Europe had generally fallen out of use militarily. Like Shiro, the Indian forts, Durga or Durg in Sanskrit, shared features with castles in Europe such as acting as a domicile for a lord as well as being fortifications. They too developed differently from the structures known as castles that had their origins in Europe. Common features Mot Hay Mot was an earthen mound with a flat top. It was often artificial, although sometimes it incorporated a pre-existing feature of the landscape. The excavation of earth to make the mound left a ditch around the mot, called a moat. Mot and moat derive from the same old French word, 
indicating that the features were originally associated and depended on each other for their construction. Although the motte is commonly associated with the bailey to form a motte and bailey castle, this was not always the case and there are instances where a motte existed on its own. Motte refers to the mound alone, but it was often surmounted by a fortified structure, such as a keep and the flat top would be surrounded by a palisade. It was common for the motte to be reached over a flying bridge, as shown in the Bayer Tapestry's depiction of Chateau de Dinan. Sometimes a motte covered an older castle or hall, whose rooms became underground storage areas and prisons beneath a new keep. Bailey and Encinta a Bailey, also called a ward, was a fortified enclosure. It was a common feature of castles, and most had at least one. The keep on top of the motte was the domicile of the lord in charge of the castle and a bastion of last defence, while the bailey was the home of the rest of the lord's household and gave them protection. The barracks for the garrison, stables, workshops, and storage facilities were often found in the bailey. Water was supplied by a well or cistern. Over time the focus of high-status accommodation shifted from the keep to the bailey. This resulted in the creation of another bailey that separated the high-status buildings, such as the Lord's Chambers and the Chapel, from the everyday structures such as the workshops and barracks. From the late 12th century there was a trend for knights to move out of the small houses they had previously occupied within the bailey to live in fortified houses in the countryside. Although often associated with the Motten Bailey type of castle, baileys could also be found as independent defensive structures. These simple fortifications were called ringworks. The Encinta was the castle's main defensive enclosure, and the terms bailey and Encinta are linked. A castle could have several baileys but only one Encinta. Castles with no keep, which relied on their outer defenses for protection, are sometimes called Encinta castles. These were the earliest form of castles, before the keep was introduced in the 10th century. Keep A Keep was a great tower and usually the most strongly defended point of a castle before the introduction of concentric defense. Keep was not a term used in the medieval period, the term was applied from the 16th century onwards. Instead, donjon was used to refer to great towers or turrets in Latin. In modern bailey castles, the keep was on top of the motte. Dungeon is a corrupted form of donjon and means a dark, unwelcoming prison. Although often the strongest part of a castle and a last place of refuge if the outer defences fell, the keep was not left empty in case of attack but was used as a residence by the lord who owned the castle, or his guests or representatives. At first this was usual only in England, when after the Norman conquest of 1066 the conquerors lived for a long time in a constant state of alert, elsewhere the lord's wife presided over a separate residence close to the keep, and the donjon was a barracks and headquarters. Gradually, the two functions merged into the same building, and the highest residential stories had large windows, as a result for many structures. It is difficult to find an appropriate term. The massive internal spaces seen in many surviving dungeons can be misleading. They would have been divided into several rooms by light partitions, as in a modern office building. Even in some large castles the great hall was separated only by a partition from the lord's chamber, his bedroom and to some extent his office. Curtain wall Curtain walls were defensive walls enclosing a bailey. They had to be high enough to make scaling the walls with ladders difficult and thick enough to withstand bombardment from siege engines which, from the 15th century onwards, included gunpowder artillery. A typical wall could be 3 meters thick and 12 meters tall, although sizes varied greatly between castles. To protect them from undermining, curtain walls were sometimes given a stone skirt around their bases. Walkways along the tops of the curtain walls allowed defenders to rain missiles on enemies below, and battlements gave them further protection.
Curtain walls were studded with towers to allow enfilading fire along the wall. Arrow slits in the walls did not become common in Europe until the 13th century, for fear that they might compromise the wall's strength. Gatehouse The entrance was often the weakest part in a circuit of defences. To overcome this, the gatehouse was developed, allowing those inside the castle to control the flow of traffic. In earthen timber castles, the gateway was usually the first feature to be rebuilt in stone. The front of the gateway was a blind spot and to overcome this, projecting towers were added on each side of the gate in a style similar to that developed by the Romans. The gatehouse contained a series of defences to make a direct assault more difficult than battering down a simple gate. Typically, there were one or more portcullises, a wooden grille reinforced with metal to block a passage, and arrow slits to allow defenders to harry the enemy. The passage through the gatehouse was lengthened to increase the amount of time an assailant had to spend under fire in a confined space and unable to retaliate. It is a popular myth that so-called murder holes, openings in the ceiling of the gateway passage, were used to pour boiling oil or molten lead on attackers. The price of oil and lead and the distance of the gatehouse from fires meant that this was impractical. They were most likely used to drop objects on attackers, or to allow water to be poured on fires to extinguish them. Provision was made in the upper story of the gatehouse for accommodation so the gate was never left undefended. Although this arrangement later evolved to become more comfortable at the expense of defense, during the 13th and 14th centuries the Barbican was developed. This consisted of a rampart ditch, and possibly a tower, in front of the gatehouse which could be used to further protect the entrance. The purpose of a Barbican was not just to provide another line of defense but also to dictate the only approach to the gate. Moat A moat was a defensive ditch with steep sides, and could be either dry or filled with water. Its purpose was twofold, to stop devices such as siege towers from reaching the curtain wall and to prevent the walls from being undermined. Water moats were found in low-lying areas and were usually crossed by a drawbridge, although these were often replaced by stone bridges. Fortified islands could be added to the moat, adding another layer of defense. Water defenses, such as moats or natural lakes, had the benefit of dictating the enemy's approach to the castle. The site of the 13th century Carefilly Castle in Wales covers over 30 acres and the water defenses created by flooding the valley to the south of the castle, are some of the largest in Western Europe. Other features battlements were most often found surmounting curtain walls and the tops of gatehouses, and comprised several elements, crenellations, hoardings, machicolations, and loopholes. Crenellation is the collective name for alternating crenels and merlons gaps and solid blocks on top of a wall. Hoardings were wooden constructs that projected beyond the wall, allowing defenders to shoot it or drop objects on attackers at the base of the wall without having to lean perilously over the crenellations, thereby exposing themselves to retaliate refire. Machicolations were stone projections on top of a wall with openings that allowed objects to be dropped on an enemy at the base of the wall in a similar fashion to hoardings. Arrow slits, also commonly called loopholes, were narrow vertical openings in defensive walls which allowed arrows or crossbow bolts to be fired on attackers. The narrow slits were intended to protect the defender by providing a very small target but the size of the opening could also impede the defender if it was too small. A smaller horizontal opening could be added to give an archer a better view for aiming. Sometimes a sally port was included. This could allow the garrison to leave the castle and engage besieging forces. It was usual for the latrines to empty down the external walls of a castle and into the surrounding ditch.